Hello and welcome back to my channel known as Traditional Country Music Artist. Here I will talk about the traditional country music genre and the artists that made hit after hit with this type of music. This music that is the backbone of country music. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Now we also have a website where you can go and listen to these artists' music and read a little bit more about them if you would like to. I'll leave a link to the website down in the description box below. Y'all be sure to check it out. I think you'll really like it. Now this next artist I want to tell you about is Roy Claxton Acuff. He was an American country music singer, fiddler, and promoter known as the king of country music, Roy Acuff. Acuff is often credited with moving the genre from its early string band and hoedown format to the singer-based format that helped make it internationally successful. In 1952, Hank Williams told Ralph Cleason, he's the biggest singer this music ever knew. You booked him, you didn't need to worry about the crowds for drawing power in the South. It was Roy Acuff. Although he helped bring country music to the city and to the world of big business, Acuff came from the rural folk-based background. His father farmed while he also served as Maynardville's postmaster and was the town's pastor at the Baptist Church. As a youth, Acuff soaked in music of all sorts. Folk, ballads, and fiddle tunes learned from neighbors and kin, hymns learned from the itinerant school instructors, recordings of early country artists, and even some of the classical vocal trainings pursued by his sister Sue after the family moved to Fountain City, a Knoxville suburb. But Acuff's real love at the time was sports. In high school, he lettered in football, basketball, and baseball. After graduation, Acuff turned down a scholarship to nearby Carson Newman College and worked temporarily at a variety of jobs, including that of railroad cowboy, the one responsible for rounding up other workers as the need arose. He also played semi-professional baseball and boxed informally. Early in 1929, Major League Baseball scouts recruited Acuff for training camp, but his collapse during a game, an after effect of early sunstroke, prompted a nervous breakdown and sidelined him for most of 1930. During his recuperation, though, Acuff began to practice his fiddle. He then began the music career in the 1930s and gained regional fame as the singer and fiddle for the group, the Smoky Mountain Boys. In 1932, Dr. Howard's Medicine Show, which toured the Southern Appalachian regions, hired Acuff as one of its entertainers. Acuff began his career as a black-faced performer. The purpose of the entertainment was to draw in large crowds so Dr. Howard could sell patent medicine of suspect quality, though, for various ailments. In 1934, Acuff left the medicine show circuit and began playing at local shows and various musicians in the Knoxville area, where he had become a celebrity and fixture in local newspaper columns. That year, the guitarist Jess Easterday and the Hawaiian guitarist Clayle Summy joined Acuff to form the Tennessee Cracker Jacks, which performed regularly, regularly on the Knoxville radio station WROL and WNOX. Within a year, the group had added the bassist Red Jones and changed its name to the Crazy Tennesseans after being introduced by such by a WROL announcer named Alan Stout. Fans often remarked to Acuff how clear his voice was coming through over the radio, which was important in this era when singers were often drowned out by the string bands. 
the popularity of A Cuffs rendering the song The Great Speckled Bird helped the group land a contract with ARC Recordings for which they recorded several dozen tracks, including the band's best-known track, Wabash Cannonball, in 1936. He joined the Grand Ole Opry in 1938, and although his popularity as a musician waned in the later 1940s, he remained one of Opry's key figures and promoters for nearly four decades. What a career. Four decades. Can you imagine? Wow. In 1942, Acuff and Fred Rose founded Acuff Rose Music, the first major Nashville-based country music publishing company, which signed such artists as Hank Williams, Roy Orbison, and the Everly Brothers. Now, in 1943, Acuff was initiated into the East Nashville Freemasonic Lodge in Tennessee, of which he remained a life time member. Later that year, Acuff invited Tennessee Governor Prentice Cooper to be the guest of honor at a gala held to mark the nationwide premiere of Opry's Prince Albert show. Cooper rejected the offer, however, and lambasted Acuff and his disgraceful music for making Tennessee the hillbilly capital of the United States. Now, what's wrong with hillbillies? Ass. Acuff left the Opry during 1946 and 1947 in a salary dispute. He returned to host the Royal Crown Cola Show segment. He also opened a recreational park near Clarksville, Tennessee, ran unsuccessfully for the governorship of Tennessee on the Republican ticket in 1948 and made his first international tour with the Opry Troop that performed for U.S. military bases in Europe in 1949. His subsequent travels outside the U.S. mainland included Alaska, Korea, Japan, the Caribbean, Australia, and the Mediterranean. In 1962, Acuff became the first living inductee into the Country Music Hall of Fame. In 1971, Acuff received a su substantial boost by participating in the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band's famous Will the Circle Be Unbroken recording sessions. The album, which was released in 1972, featured a number of country music greats, including Maybelle Carter, Merle Travis, and Doc Watson. This added to the exposure Acuff had gained on the college circuit during the folk music revival of the 1960s. Other testaments to his continuing popularity were the 1974 chart-making records, Back in the Country, Old Time Sunshine song written by the Acuff Rose singer-songwriter Eddie Raven. In the early 1980s, after the death of his wife Mildred Acuff, then in his 80s, moved into a small house on the Opryland grounds and continued performing daily on stage. He arrived early most days at the Opry before the shows and performed odd jobs, such as stocking soda in the backstage refrigerators. He made a cameo appearance in the music video for Mo Bandy and Joe Stampley in 1984 parody hit song, Where's the Dress? In 1988, he received the Golden Plate Award of the American Academy of Achievement. In 1991, he was awarded the National Medal of Arts and given a Lifetime Achievement Award by the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, the first country music act to receive this esteemed honor. Roy Acuff died at the Baptist Hospital in Nashville on November 23, 1992 of congestive heart failure at the age of 80. Nine. He is buried in the Hillcrest section, Grave 6, Lot 9 of Spring Hill Cemetery 
on Gallatin Road in Nashville, Tennessee. We lost a great one when we lost Roy Acuff. And that, my friends, in short, is the life of Roy Acuff. If you would like if you like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click that bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. If y'all have any suggestions or want me to talk about a certain artist of the traditional classic music era, leave me a comment down below. I'll see what I can do for you. Thank you.